o'clock for your office in Burton. Again, can I welcome everyone to this afternoon's Transport Committee? Uh, obviously, there's a little bit of housekeeping we always have today. I'm just reminding everyone that we haven't got a fire alarm planned for today. So if the alarms do go off and sound, uh, if we can make sure we uh, make our way out via the signed exits and sort of make our way to the relevant uh, assembly point just outside the Museum of Liverpool. Uh, also as well, the filming and photography, we very much welcome filming and photography, uh, but we would always ask that because some devices can sometimes interfere with um, the um, induction loop that comes from the microphones, if you are intended on using uh, any form of recording equipment, be that audio or visual, if you can just let us know in advance, that would be very much appreciated. The first proper item of business is apologies for absence, and uh, Charles, what have we got? Chair, we've got apologies from Councillor John Stockton, Councillor Norman Keats, Councillor Tony Carr, Councillor Susan Murphy, and Councillor Jeff Fulton. Okay, and I think Councillor Ron Abbey as well, if we can record those at the recording. Uh, particularly, uh, both Tony and, and Sue uh, are a bit poorly at the moment, so if we can record our best wishes for speed recoveries, that would be great as well. Okay, second item is declarations of interest, and that's just a standard for me to uh, remind anyone that if you do have anything that you need to declare, either now or at any stage during proceedings, please don't hesitate to do so, so we can record it uh, accordingly. And the third item is the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, there is actually, uh, before I remove them as a, a record, there is uh, an issue I wanted to, to raise on page 10 uh, of the... Um, and it's just with regard to uh, the petitions and statements of the ones submitted by Councillor Carol Story. Just uh, so it's recorded in the minutes, uh, there are a few bits that I said that haven't been recorded. So, uh, in order that it's recorded uh, appropriately, uh, I did mention about how the issue of that bus service, the 165, is something that Councillor Jeremy Wolfson has been campaigning for for a long period of time. I also made the point that currently the buses are deregulated, so we don't have the control over every individual service and we don't have the ability to take um, profits derived from the commercially and successful services and use those to cross subsidise the uh, non-profitable services. And finally, one of the reasons that we can't put on every service that uh, we would wish to, unfortunately, is because of the austerity that's been meted out by this government and the previous Liberal Democrat and Conservative coalition. Those were the words that I said, and I presume everyone's comfortable with making sure that that is recorded uh, entirely. Apart from all those bits, if there's nothing else anyone wants to add, uh, can we agree the minutes of the last minute meeting from the 4th of October? Helen, you wanted to raise some points. Yeah, just a couple of quite small points on page 5. Um, the first full paragraph there, um, yeah, uh, I was actually referring to two buses, so it's the 82 to speak and the 79 to Belvale. And then a couple of paragraphs later, there's a little bit missing, which uh, doesn't make it clear what I was saying. Uh, the, two or, the two or four bus was not considered a bus to go to the city centre by Belvale residents. So uh, it's just an addition of the bus. Thank you. Okay. Any further amendments to the, the minutes we need to record accordingly? If not, can I move that those are accurate record of everything that happened back in October? Is that agreed? Yeah. Lovely. I shall sign those off. <coughs> okay, moving on to item four, and we've got a couple of announcements we always like to kind of um, point out when our organisation and our team are doing really, really well. And it's um, great that there's two things that I think we can suitably celebrate today. First and foremost, since we last met, we've had the National Transport Awards uh, down in London. And I'm very, very pleased to say that our bus alliance between ourselves, also working with Arriva and Stagecoach, uh, actually won the Improvements to Bus Services Award, um, very much in the fact that we've been bucking the trend in terms of growing patronage on the network. And we've got the, the trophy that the team themselves uh, were able to kind of lift aloft uh, back in, um, in October. Equally as well, uh, because that was not just our only success in the last month, 
uh, he would be completely remiss if we didn't mention the Herculean efforts that went in to make sure that we kept the city region moving during the giant spectacular uh, weekend a few weeks ago. Now, obviously, we understand that it was a very, very, very busy weekend for the city and the wider city region, and uh, there were some compromises that we had to, to make in order to keep everyone uh, running, and we very much sort of thank everyone for their kind of patience in working with us on that. However, uh, the fact that hundreds of thousands of people were able to come to the region and really enjoy what was a fantastic event on a national level, I believe, um, is testament to the hard work of everyone in the transport network, but particularly some key individuals within our own organisations who kind of uh, moved heaven and earth to make sure we were able to put those plans in place and those plans really came off uh, to fruition. So if you can join with me in giving both uh, everyone involved in the bus alliance but everyone also on the transport network uh, over the weekend of the Giants, a big round of applause, and I think we're then going to have a yeah. I think we're going to try and assemble a bit of a team photograph so we can also put that on the internet for sort of posterity's sake. So we want to uh, bring everyone up to the front and we can then get Lee to come and take a, a picture accordingly. So if you can all start to come and congregate down at the front, that'd be great. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. 
Everybody hear me okay? Oh, just look, make sure that he's not around with his camera pretty much. But okay, I wanted to, to, to give some people, members will be aware if we move on to the first slide. In August 2018, <coughs> actually 20th of August this year, both Liam and Metro Mayor Steve Rotherham launched a customer and stakeholder engagement process where we wanted feedback from our existing and potential customers at Mersey Ferries on what they think about our existing service, but also what they would like to see on any new vessels if the organisation is in a position to procure them moving forward. So there's a number of slides I'll walk through today. I won't talk through in detail every single slide and uh, the questions on there, but I'll give you the key messages from that and walk through and obviously use the opportunity to take any questions from members too. But really to remember what we're looking for is the key outcomes of this piece of work was to develop a document and a report that will help us in the design process of any new Mercy Fellies as we commission them moving forward. So how did we do that? It's really important that we've got a good balance between our existing users but also understood the needs of our non-users too. So there are a range of face-to-face -face surveys both in our terminals and also in the Liverpool City Centre and over on Wirral. There was an online survey and there were some specific, more detailed telephone interviews and face-to-face -face interviews with some of the key stakeholders in the region. So, for example, there were two key user groups that we're aware of, Friends of the Ferries and also the Heritage Society too. And Councillor Roberts joined me in some sessions with those groups too, just to make sure as, much, as many views as possible could be taken into account in this report. And you can see the details on the screen. Some more than 1,500 responses to the surveys, whether that be online, face to face, or over the telephone, which is pleasing to see. Okay, the first section, just a couple of slides on what the current use of the Mersey Ferries, what the information that they shared with us told us. Not surprisingly, we looked at the main reason for people visiting or using the Mersey ferries, and this slide really demonstrates just how key the ferries are now to the visitor economy and the wider city region. You can see that the statistic at the top, the majority of reason for trips were on a day trip to the area, but when you look at some of the other sections below that, so visiting friends, family, overnight visitors, if you